Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to D News Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of three on tattoos. If you've never tuned into D News Plus before, we take a big topic and we break it down so everybody understands it a little bit better. Make sure that you subscribe so you get more of our episodes. You can check us out on iTunes and SoundCloud. We have an audio podcast of all of the episodes from this week. This is going to be awesome. Tattoos are cool. They didn't always have that reputation. They didn't used to be cool. Well, depending on who you talk to. Don't worry, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about who started doing tattoos first, how long they've been around, what techniques we've used throughout history, what future techniques and technology might change how you look at tattoos, literally how you look at them. Augmented reality. It's going to be crazy. But first, let's start at the beginning. We've been marking up our bodies for thousands of years in various different ways, you know. Uh, it's one of humanity's earliest and most ubiquitous art forms is body modification. Everything from super mundane stuff, you know, scarification and things that are very simple when it comes to what actually happens, uh, to extremely elaborate art forms involving inks and all sorts of different piercings, super interesting stuff. And we've done all of it, and it wasn't all from one place. There's no one person or one group that started all of this. It actually seems to have had so many places of origin, it's hard to nail down throughout history who did it first. But some of the earliest evidence of tattooing specifically were on, probably not a surprise to some, Egyptians. For a long time, the earliest evidence was several tattooed female mummies dating back to around 2000 BCE. But then, Along came one of my favorite people, Utzi the Iceman. Utzi's corpse was found on the mountain border between Austria and Italy by hikers in 1991, but he was inked up. And in case you don't know who he is, you can check out our series on that. It was awesome, super fun to do. He's like a 5,000-year-old dude. There's like a murder case about it. There's also a great radio lab about it if you love radio lab like I do. You can listen to them both, get the whole thing. Anyway, he had tattoos. More than 50, he had 61 tattoos, and it was actually hard to see them all at first. So even though we'd found his body, you know, thousands of years after he dropped there on the mountainside, they took him into a lab and they didn't notice that he had tattoos right away because he had kind of darkish, ancient, frozen skin. <laughs> so black tattoo ink that was pretty faded was gonna be hard to see. But when researchers pointed a multispectral imager at him, they were able to detect color differences on his skin that you couldn't see with the naked eye. They weren't made by a needle like we would do now. Uh, he or someone else cut his skin very finely, and then rubbed some charcoal in it. How badass is that? We're gonna get into different techniques of how tattoos work later, so let's, you know, keep moving, but stick around. After examining the tattoos on Utsi, specialists found that they were mostly in areas that caused him pain. So perhaps early tattooing was medicinal. You know, it was on his ankles and knees, lower spine, and they thought it was maybe like ancient acupuncture, a way to help relieve some of the pain or stress. There also could be religious implications. They're not really sure. But getting back to the Egyptians, we have evidence that a lot of female Egyptians, a lot of Egyptian women had tattoos. We first saw this on figurines, but those figurines were dating back to like 4,000, 3,500 BCE, and they had tattoos on their thighs. They also found tools that they think were used to tattoo specifically you know, individuals, little small bronze implements, and they found those in Gurab, or northern Egypt, and they date back to about 1450 BCE. There weren't a lot of examples of this, though. It wasn't just figurines and tools. They had to go find mummies that also had tattoos. And again, it was mostly women. Many archaeologists think that uh, these women were specifically more of the promiscuous variety, uh, prostitution, essentially. And while that may be correct, others think that that's not correct and that the tattoos were meant to protect women from STDs or to help bless pregnancies or, you know, help along pregnancies. Common tattoos were dots over the abdomen and bes, or B-E-S, at the top of the thigh. Bes is a household deity, the protector of women in labor, so that tattoo location makes a lot of sense. Earlier this year, actually, bioarchaeologist Anne Austin from Stanford, found more than 30 tattoos on a 3,000-year-old female mummy found in a city called Deir el Medina. This is an ancient Egyptian city near Luxor, or also known as Thebes. It's one of the major ancient cities of Egypt, it's still around. Austin originally thought that it was painted on to these mummies, 
but later determined they were in fact tattoos. And there were a lot of them. And they were super ornate, like lotus blossoms on the hips and cows on the arm and baboons on her neck and wajet eyes, which are ancient symbols of power. Ancient Egyptians thought the symbols might protect them from evil. So to get them tattooed on their body, I mean, that's pretty awesome. These were just the first tattoos to be found that depict more than just simple patterns. A lot of tattooing, especially in ancient cultures, were lines and symbols, what we would consider today more tribal tattoos. These were very intricate and ornate. And so it's pretty crazy that they were on this thousands of year old body. But not everybody was super into tattooing. Like if that's the earliest tattoos, obviously there's gotta be haters, right? And ancient Romans were the haters in this story. They believed in the purity of the human form. So they would often use tattoos to brand criminals or the condemned. Everything else was pretty much banned. It was just for people that the Romans were like, nah, these people bad. But then at some point when the Romans fought an army of Britons, which you can guess where they were from, they saw how proudly the Britons were wearing tattoos and how it would make finding your friend or foe easier because they could identify each other. And Roman soldiers were like, yo, that's pretty sick. Let me get some of that. I mean, I don't speak Romans. That's not a direct quote, but you get what I mean. And then, of course, the Romans were super cool. So as soon as they started using tattooing, they perfected putting them on and designing them and also had tattoo removal, although they weren't using lasers back then. We're not going to get into it. Tattoos were all over the world at various times. In pre-Columbian cultures of Peru and Chile, the Moche civilization used tattooing to show status or leadership. And it was a long-held belief that the Moche civilization was patriarchal until in 2006, a heavily tattooed 25-year-old woman was discovered. And the people who discovered her believed that she was the first female leader because those tattoos, again, remember, showing status. So she wouldn't just have gotten tattooed because she felt like it. It meant that she was important. But we can't go on talking about tattoos. I mean, we've talked about it a while already, and we haven't talked about some of the most famous, the Polynesians. In Polynesian culture, tattooing is fairly common. It's actually where the word tattoo originated. It came from the word tatau. In Samoa, they've been tattooing for over 2,000 years by hand. I mean, technically we still tattoo by hand, but I mean by hand, and it could take a full year to heal in many cases. You know, just wrap it in saran wrap and rub lotion on it. This is way more serious. It was extremely painful. But to resist this tattooing, it was part of the culture, was to be labeled a coward. In 1769, Joseph Banks, who was a naturalist on the ship Endeavor, wrote uh, in Smithsonian Magazine, reported, quote, it was done with a large instrument about two inches long containing about 30 teeth. Every stroke drew blood. The girl wailed and writhed, but two women held her down, occasionally beating her. The agony lasted more than an hour. We'll get into more of how tattooing's done later on, but it's pretty serious stuff, especially before the invention of the technology that we use today, which we'll also get into later. Samoa wasn't the only Polynesian culture tattooing though. Hawaiian culture had their own art of tattooing known as cacao. Then of course, New Zealand culture or Maori, they had their own tattooing called moko. And in several of these cultures, tattooing was hated on by somebody else who showed up and said, hey, that's weird and gross and we don't like it. And of course, who could it be but the Christian missionaries? They tried to be a bunch of buzzkills and stop the practice of tattooing. Of course, they failed. Tattooing still exists. Sorry, missionaries. But it did make us ask ourselves, when is it that it became okay in more traditional Western societies to do this practice that was mostly associated with more barbaric cultures? The Britons were not always cultured tea drinkers. You know, Ancient Europeans may have practiced tattooing, but it largely had disappeared as the Christians and maybe more of this purity feeling started to come about in Europe as well. But then European explorers like Captain Cook went and visited Polynesia. And there, because it was such a big cultural implication, they came back sporting tats. In England, young King Edward VII got a few tats and then he took the throne and everybody was all like, King's got some tats, that's pretty cool. Pretty much when kings do stuff, everyone else bandwagons. King George V, around the turn of the last century, he had a Japanese-style dragon tattooed on his body. That is awesome, Google it, super cool. 
In America, the culture of tattooing has also evolved and changed over time. Uh, my experience recently, I was watching uh, the Summer Games in Rio, and there seemed to be a lot of tattoos on American athletes and not a lot on some other athletes. It was super interesting. Maybe you noticed too. But anyway, sidebar and sidebar. Martin Hildebrandt had the first tattoo shop in the U.S. around 1870 in New York. He basically started the tradition of tattooing sailors and military servicemen. So it was around you know, more than 150 years ago. And then in World War II, tattoos on servicemen and women exploded. There's a lot of social culture embedded in these group tattooings. And it harkens back to this ancient tattooing culture, signs of loyalty, signs of status, signs of power, signs of protection, commemorating something awesome you did in battle, or even just art. And of course, you can't mention tattooing without also, as we mentioned earlier, labeling people who are others. You know, tattooing can be used in a bunch of different ways, both as a positive and also as a negative. And that's kind of where we are today, right? Tattoos are definitely today have pushed forward into more of the positive in our culture. They're an art form more than they are anything else. And this isn't the definitive full story of tattooing. We didn't get into every uh, you know, culture that made tattooing their own. There's the Native American cultures, there's Inuit cultures and Asian cultures, and everybody had tattooing in different ways, and they are all super cool, and we wish we could talk about them all, but we're gonna run out of time. So come back tomorrow to learn about how exactly these people throughout history and into the modern day, we're getting these tattoos, because it is super awesome. If you like to learn how things are put together, and you like to learn about machines like the tattooing machines that we're about to talk about in the next chunk of this series, you should check out How It's Made. It's a show on Science Channel, and you can watch it right now on your phone or your tablet if you go to the App Store and download the Science Go app. You can watch all the seasons of How It's Made, it's mesmerizing. You can also check out your other favorite Science Channel shows like Alien Encounters or, you know, whatever. There, there's way, way more. So go check them out, and the link is down in the description. Thanks a lot for tuning in to this episode of DNews Plus. Tell us down in the comments if you've got a tattoo. I've got one. It's on the back of my left leg. Maybe I'll tell you about it if you're lucky. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll see you next time.